And we are now recording. Okay, thanks, Stephanie. Um, so this is the uh, bi-weekly meeting of the Amherst Energy and Climate Action Committee. And I always give a little blurb at the top. I was gonna skip it today because of the full agenda, but we have two new members. So I will do my usual spiel. Um, ECAC was organized to guide the town in meeting its climate mitigation and resilience goals. Uh, those goals and the plan for getting there are adopted from the Climate Action Adaptation and Resilience Plan or the CARP, which was accepted by the town council a few years ago in 2021. Uh, it takes 2016 as its base year and calls for a 25% reduction in carbon emissions by 2025, 50% by 2030, and carbon neutrality by 2050. So this committee has two primary functions. One of them is to advise the town council and recommend or propose policies or actions that help us meet the climate goals. And the other is to do some outreach and promote a just, equitable, and speedy climate response um, through outreach and engagement to town and local stakeholders. Um, and that's what I got for today. So without further ado, I think before we do anything else, we might just introduce our new members, no? Yes. So let's just take a moment. Um, Caitlin, do you want to introduce yourself? Or, maybe, or should we all go around and introduce ourselves? Why don't we let Caitlin and Andrew go first and then Good idea. you can all introduce yourselves. Go ahead, Caitlin. Hi, uh, my name's Caitlin. Um, I live in Amherst and uh, I work for an environmental consulting firm as a landscape architect. Yes, thank you. Um, and Andrew? Hi, yeah, I'm Andrew. I also live in Amherst. Um, I work as a software engineer for a company. Um, I work remotely for a company out in San Francisco as a software engineer. Um, so I guess we'll just go around and introduce ourselves. So I'm Lori Gold. We're all residents of Amherst. So <laughs> I'm Lori Goldner. I've been here 16, almost 17 years now. Uh, in Amherst, not here on this webinar, and um, I teach at UMass. Uh, Steve? Good evening. Hi, I am Steve Roof. I'm a professor of Earth and Environmental Science at Hampshire College. I live in South Amherst, and I do climate change research and renewable energy and sustainability studies there at Hampshire, helping develop our climate action plan. And I've been working with Stephanie in the town of Amherst for decades, I think, on various sustainability projects um, and have been serving on the ECAC since it formed. I'll remember Don, go ahead. Yeah, I'm, I'm Don Allison. Um, my wife and I and our four children um, have lived in Amherst since 1988. We, like Steve, live in South Amherst. Um, all four of my kids are grown and gone. Um, and I'm a lawyer and have been a lawyer forever. So that's it. Hey, Michael? Hi, uh, Michael Issing. I've uh, lived in Amherst for almost four years now, I believe. Yeah, um, I've been part of the ECAC since uh, January, February of this year. So fairly new member. Um, mechanical engineer, I work for an energy consulting firm um, doing kind of uh, building energy consulting for commercial real estate properties. And Tony. Hi, I'm Tony. I'm a PhD at UMass. I've been in Amherst for three years now. I also, like Michael, joined ECAC in earlier this year. Um, and I do renewable energy and equitable transition research. Your audio is not working great, Tony. We can hear you, but it's sort of garbled. Okay. Just so you know. All right, so um, the first thing on the agenda is always to review and vote on the minutes from last week. So I have them up here um, and can Lori, share. sorry, you need someone to take minutes. Oh, oh, right, we need someone to take minutes. Uh, who hasn't done it in a while? Steve, you wanna do it? Um, well, I've done it recently, but unless vacant is going to do it this time or the new people, I seem to be back at the top of the list. So I'm, I'm doing it. Okay. All right. Thank you, Steve. Um, all right. Okay. Let me get the, um, do you want me to share my screen, Lori? Cause I have, um, yeah, go ahead. Why don't you go ahead if you have them. Uh, I did find one mistake, uh, Steve, it took me a moment to figure out who Rook was <laughs> at the very end. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. right. I was supposed to change that. I'm sorry. It's, it occurs in two places in the same. Uh, yeah, I, I know. Yeah, I know where it is. I saw it. I'm sorry. I meant to right. update that. <laughs> Only a moment. <laughs> yep. So if anyone has any comments, go ahead and let us know if there's anything that needs to be changed. I have to say there's a very nice discussion summar summary there of uh, the annual report discussion that I have not, I didn't see it until recently and I haven't had a chance to incorporate it into the annual report. So I there are some good things in there that I wanna make sure are reflected and I just haven't done it yet. I think under bullet 11, it says Lori updates. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. We usually use last names. Hard to remember that. Cut. I'll also uh, put Darcy Dumont under 12. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yep. <clears throat> Thank you. I did not know her last name. No, no worries. I got it. I should have caught that. I'm sorry. Right. I have to remember to look at these minutes before I complete the annual report. And we'll talk about it more today anyway. Okay. So if you're good, I'll stop sharing. Yes. Yep. Go ahead. And I and should just advise that um, both Caitlin and Andrew should abstain from voting on this particular set of minutes. I will move to accept the minutes as amended. A second. I think we got one. Second. Mike. Is that Tony? Uh, Michael. Or Michael. Michael. Okay, sorry. Great. All right, and in no particular order. Um, Roof. Yes. Goldner. Yes. Davis. You can just say abstain if you just unmute yourself. Sorry, abstain. Thank you. Um, Andrew, is it Lainung? Uh, it's Lainung. Lainung? Okay. Lainung? Yeah, uh, abstain. Okay. Issing? Uh, yes. Allison? Yes. McElrath? Yes. Okay. Minutes are approved. Thank you. Okay. Next thing on the agenda is always public comment, but I don't think we have any public members out there today. So we move on to the annual report. So I'm gonna share this one because I want to be able to make changes. Where'd it go? That's not it, hang on a minute. That's weird. There it is. Okay. Sorry, for some reason I had the wrong thing up. Let me go ahead and share this. Huh. I don't, see, oh, there it is. All right, so that was the next thing on the agenda, right? Annual report. Yeah, okay, because we have a lot to cover today and I don't wanna, we do have some things to talk about here. So I will go through the notes and try to incorporate some more of the comments from last time. Um, I kept the introduction brief. Um, I might put some of that stuff in here, but I, I think rather than discuss that, I'd like to just go to the town manager goals and um, some of the other, you know, we had a lot of bullet points last time. I think we went through most of them. If anyone has any more you can think of, let me know. I also went through some of this with Stephanie. Um, but then I went through the ECAC itself, the, so in the ECA, in the CARP rather, um, there are a list of um, goals of, of, of tasks, basically, right? Things that need to get done to meet all of the goals. And I've been trying to just go through them all and indicate what the status on them is. And I've been doing, uh, Stephanie and I got through part of this, but I wanted to ask for your input on that. 
Um, you know, if you see anything here, I don't know that we need to do this right now. We could probably do that part offline. If you see something that needs to be indicated that you know was worked on, that that should be ongoing. I've sort of put them into several, you know, ongoing, done, or modified in some cases for things like uh, developing a building energy retrofit program. <clears throat> building energy retrofits are sort of not being emphasized anymore. They're, they're expensive and not thought to be as necessary as they used to be. It's more just a weatherization campaign. So that goal has sort of been modified and incorporated into the heat pump program in part. Um, and then there are some other goals that it's just not clear how they would ever be implemented given the way the town is managed and what different people can do and can't do. Um, so I've been just going through that. And I think Stephanie, you and I can probably finish most of that. But again, if there are comments, it might be best just to distribute it and get comments back. Does that seem reasonable on this first, on this stuff? My only comment would be for those that we haven't started yet, I think those are the ones marked with a question mark. Some of them are question marks because we haven't started them. Some of them are question marks because I don't know what to say yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I would say for those that we, we know we haven't started yet, maybe use something other than a question mark. Right. Um, what, what would you use, by the way? Um, not started yet. Not started. Uh, okay. Not started. Yeah, not started. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then the ones, then, then the question marks that remain will be flags to us to yeah. figure out the status, I guess. Right. And like, uh, and like this one. So, so, you know, this one, mobile food, I, I don't know the status of the mobile food market, for example. So those are questions. I do. That's okay. me, Lori. I'll update you on that one. Okay. So if you want to update those, that'd be great. And then other ones where we are, you know, where it's not started, we'll put in not started. Um, but folks, if you know something about one of these, send me back an edited version, track the changes. So I know what you changed, but, um, you know, just go ahead and make your changes. And they'll probably and Lori, just call it over you. Yep. I'll look at those as well, because I didn't, we didn't finish going through them. Right. So some of them I will know the status of. So I will yeah. get those to you. Yeah. you. You can tell how far we got. We got to about here. <laughs> Maybe a little, you know, somewhere up here somewhere. We got these done. And then my computer crashed. <laughs> so uh, yeah, there's a bunch of them to think about, um, to go through. This is a summary. This is the same sort of table, except um, it's pulled right from the CARP and it's just the major bullet points, not the little subtasks under each. It's the headers, each of these headers, 1.3, 1.2, 1.1. So this is sort of a summary table of all those different things. Um, and I think that just goes in. This, this is something that I know Stephanie re refers to in planning the next year that we should also be looking at in planning the next year. Where are the things that need to be done next? Um, all right, and then finally, town manager goals. So. Um, where were we on these last week? I don't, don't quite remember. Or two weeks ago, we talked about, so let's just go through them one at a time and see if there's anything you want to add. Oh, and Stephanie, you were going to report back on something here, transportation plan. Um, yeah, they they haven't, they haven't gotten very far with it. It's just been basically, uh, in sort of on hold. All right, then I think I'm just gonna, you know, so th this is a this is a real problem in my mind because we have a lot of streets that are not very friendly to pedestrians or bicycles. Um, like I say, Pelham Road, which is my direct route to campus, is uh, it just gets more dangerous all the time. Every time they patch another pothole, they make it more dangerous. And um, you know, I've gotten to the point where I drive my bike out of the neighborhood and then ride from there because I just don't want to be dead. Um, so I, you know, I, I really feel like we should probably leave that in. Uh, you know, we ask the, you know, completing a plan doesn't mean you have to do it all in one year, but they should complete the plan. Um, it seems to me that's a reasonable thing to ask the town manager to put in one of his, as one of his goals. What, what do people think? And then it would just read. I think that's, I mean, um, I think that's fine. I, maybe we explain how that pertains to ECAC. Um, you know, we want to support, 
you know, we want the town manager to support the completion of the transport transportation plan since it directly correlates with greenhouse gas emissions and um and enlarge the car and, and the carp um right. just because it, it there it, <laughs> we're asking him to support another <laughs> um i guess another entity um, within the city so right providing alternate forms of transportation alternate greener forms of transportation is a key part of the car or something like that forms of transportation is a key element of the car maybe maybe in saying that it supports the carp goals um supports the i carp think goal. yeah i because again i think to what Michael is suggesting is sort of softening it a little bit. So it sounds more like you're supporting another body's work. Right. <clears throat> or maybe we say, you know, the town manager in conjunction with the ECAC to support or something. Um, kind of highlight, try to highlight that we are also trying to support this at the same time. Um, I, like, maybe I just say, change. I don't know. We yeah. ask rather than we want. We ask. Yeah. You know, consistent with the other language that you have. I still manage to support the completion of the transportation plan, providing alternate greener forms. I, I feel like we should say a little more about you know completing the plan isn't even expensive. <laughs> it's just the plan. You know, I I think there are other reasons that committee has gone through some transitions so i think there may be reasons why it it hasn't moved forward hmm. i would like to say you know and me i, I want to add it makes our road safer for everyone <laughs> because i really think that's a big part of it something along those lines because in providing those greener forms we're going to eventually be you know, beefing up our sidewalks, making bike paths, things that we don't have right now that we need in places that we need. Them. Does that does that sound reasonable? We can wordsmith it a little more later if you have the general idea of what you want there yeah. now. Can I ask, is there a different committee that, about public safety and something like that? Because our, our committee is for the environment, which, you know, has positive externalities for safety, but should we mention like this also supports broader goals and supports broader goals yeah well, but i don't know which ones those are <laughs> yeah is there a public safety committee stephanie i don't i, I don't think know. there is actually um we have committees for everything in amherst so <laughs> yeah, i'm pretty <laughs> sure there is <laughs> and how did you say that you had a different way of saying this um andrew uh, supports CARP's goal and uh, uh, you said something about, and I lost it. Well, we record this meeting, so <laughs> <laughs> go back and watch. Yeah. <clears throat> I think I said like supports broader goals. Uh, broader, that was it. Goals, yeah. um, what's CARP goals as well as broader goals? How about that? Yeah. You should include the words public safety goals, not just. Broader. Yeah. That's, yeah, right. More, be a little specific there. Public safety. Yeah. I'm not seeing a specific committee. Um, I'm looking, but unless I'm, it might be embedded in something else. Oh, uh, there's a, well, there's the Community Safety and Social Justice Committee. But mm -hmm. I think that probably falls a little work. more. That's more, well, that's more. Um, an equity focused yeah. than actual safety in terms of, you know, like road safety. Yeah. Um, I think the TAC is really the appropriate committee for that, for this particular issue. Right. Yeah. All right. But I think leaving it something like this is probably reasonable, right? As well as broader goals like public safety. I don't know that broader, that it's really a broader goal, but a um, other. other goals. <laughs> The word broader sounds good there, but I'm not sure it's accurate. 
other goals. Yep. They're, they're both very broad goals. <laughs> yep. Cool. Other goals. Um, okay, so going back to the first one, the first one is our, our usual ask for additional staff to support Stephanie and her work. And generally in the town, to, there's so much to be done. Um, and Stephanie is one person. Um, in regards to building energy, trying to make contact to the things we're supposed to be thinking about. Um, this is in regards to transportation, which is, I think, one of the, isn't that one of the, where is that renewable energy? Mm. Transportation, yeah. Mm -hmm. Infrastructure. Okay, so in regards to transportation and infrastructure. Infrastructure, what did I say? Infrastructure. We can. Um, okay, in regards to building energy, we propose the town manager utilize ECAC as a resource to help promote pace with small businesses, the small business heat pump conversions, particularly in light of the new heat pump program. So that's a fairly inexpensive ask. Just keep us in the loop and remember that we're here. Um, we ask that the town manager draw on expertise as the town evaluates the draft solar bylaw. That's in regards to, I think, renewable energy, which is another one of these things. Um, Regional issue. Okay, so we just did transfer. Laurie, you're freezing. Uh, your audio cut out. Oh, it's frozen. She's frozen. Okay. <laughs> Looks like. She stopped editing. The, yeah. Well, I guess her share, share screen share is frozen. So you should sign in again. Does someone have her cell phone number? I'm about to text her. Thank you. There, great. Yeah, she'll come back. Hello. Welcome back. Is that just me dropping out? Yes. Okay. Yes. Sorry about that. <laughs> How far did I get talking to myself there? <laughs> <laughs> so I was going through these one at a time. I don't know when I dropped out. Just I think point number five. Renewable energy. Yeah. Well, five. Okay, good. So you got that was mostly that was when I actually saw myself, saw the whole thing drop. Okay. Um so in regards to regional issues, um, we ask that you engage ECAC to help find ways to reach out to community members who have chosen an alternative energy supplier. So right, we were talking about Valley Green Energy, our new CCA that works better if everybody subscribes. And a lot of us are subscribed not to Eversource Basic Service. Um, and uh, there needs to be a way to reach out to us. I, for example, am one of those people and I have received absolutely nothing in the mail or anywhere else about, about the CCA. Um, so you I'm, won't receive anything in the mail because you're not a basic service customer. So yes. how you're being contacted is by me bringing people into the meeting and doing a presentation. Right. And that's that's how we're getting that information out. I just wanted to be clear that, you know, yeah. because people that don't that have a third party um, private supplier are, are not going to get any kind of notification because there's no way to know who they are. Right. Well, we can't just write to everybody in town. 
Um, no, because the the notification that's going out actually has each person's um, utility account number. Gotcha. So the card that they have, like if they wanted to opt out, all they have to do is return a card and it has their account number on it. Okay. So it's very specific. Um, just so getting on... some sort of a some sort of a notification that the CCA is there. I mean, that's the problem is how do we do this, right? So um, yeah, that's why we've been doing information sessions, radio interviews, press, media, <laughs> media outreach. I mean, right. we've done a lot of, you know, it's on the oh, town's really website. Nice. Right. It's on the main page, like it's on the main in the news story. So, yeah. Um, All right. So, so that's the, that's the ask there that he keep doing that outreach and that he engage us perhaps to help. Um, Lori, do you want to share your screen again? Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Somebody should have mentioned that. Uh, where to go? Uh, I know a port draft here, share. I think you have it now. Sorry about that. So I was Got talking it. about number five, this one here. So then there was an additional request, I think, at the end of the last, um, the last one is, is the usual request that somehow we find ways to incorporate sustainability in every aspect of the town's business, right? And I don't know if we need to say something like this or something a little different. Um, and then there was one other thing I wanted to bring up about about uh, request the waste management waste um, hauler proposal, but um, I think this is. What, is this what we said last year? I think this is what we had in there last year, something like this, right? Stephanie, do you remember? Um, I think so. I I don't know if it's been updated. I think this. Um, I think this is the same. Yeah. So, is there any way we should update this or change it? I can, if I. I think. Let me get back to that one. Okay. So we'll have something in there around that point, but it might need some updating. And, and the last thing I, I was going to talk about, and, and I guess I guess if it's okay with everybody else, Stephanie and I will do that offline. Um, it's just an annual report, so I don't think it needs, does it need a vote for us to accept it or just to, or is it just something I send to the town? I mean, you can vote on it once it's complete if you want. Um, you don't have to though. You don't yeah. have to, but you could. Yeah, most, most committees I've chaired, the chair asks for input and then just send something. <laughs> so with your permission, I'll just go ahead and do that. Um, get what input I can and then write something up. But the goals we should agree on. So I think if nothing else, we'll send around a final draft of the goals for everybody to at least time in on. Um, so the last thing though, was we had a request, I think that was Darcy's at the end of the last meeting to support the waste hauler proposal. And I think we're going to talk about that a little more later on this. Uh, does anyone have any information about that, Stephanie? Do you know more about it? No, it was just asked to be on the agenda. Well, I know that it is. I'm embarrassed that I did not have a chance to go to Lynn, um, Lynn's um, meeting, but she's doing it again on, on Monday. My, my local counselor is having a or committee, town committee member, town councilor, whatever they're called, is having a meeting on Monday, another one, which I put on my calendar. Um, and on that is the waste hauler proposal. So she wants to talk to folks about that and see what people think about it. Um, so there is a, I know this has been going around for a while, but I guess before we put it in a town manager goal, we better get our act together and know what it is. So maybe we need to discuss this next time. Um, and whoever's taking notes, do you make a note that, that uh, I can, I'll take care of it, I guess, look into the waste hauler proposal and figure out what exactly it consists of and if it's something we should support. I, I do know that this has been requested for a long time and a lot of towns that are in my mind among the most environmentally um, active, uh, like Ithaca, New York, they've had a waste hauler for years that they, you know, they pick up, they charge a lot for waste, but they don't charge as much for, uh, they pick up, what do you call it? Um, 
uh, uh, compost, right? And stuff like that. And I think part of this waste hauler proposal was having compost, for example, um, be picked up um, or stuff that could, is, could be compostable waste since so much of our waste is compostable. So I seem to remember hearing about that in the past and it wouldn't surprise me if that's what it was about, but let's not guess, let's, let's just talk about it next time when we know a little more. How about that? So other than something about waste hauler, so fix up, I'm just gonna make a note here to fix up number six and maybe add a waste hauler goal. Do we know, is there a proposal that has been developed by a group? Yeah, I think there has, yeah. LEA has been pushing it. There, there is, is. And, and maybe we oh, should, go ahead. I'm sorry, maybe we should invite Darcy to actually give us an overview since she's been involved with it for years. And obviously as Steve knows and Stephanie knows, was on this committee um, for a number of years. Yeah. I know that's something that's really important to her. And I know if she's available, she could give us the overview we need to see what, um, you know, what makes sense. I, I don't know what you think, Stephanie, but I think Darcy might be the most knowledgeable person I know about this proposal. I think if you all want that, that's fine. And we can reach yeah. out to her and invite her to come to the next meeting and can put it on the agenda. Let That's me, let me see. Want. Yeah. Let me, let me look into a little bit who's actually proposed it at the town council. And if there's a draft that we can look at, um, yeah, I'll, I'll talk to them first. Um, but, but that's an option. Yeah. Let me, I'm and then the, the outcome might be <clears throat> ECAC could endorse or support the, exactly. the proposal. Okay. After we've seen it and discussed it. Yeah. Okay. I think I think we need to discuss it before we. It, it seems to me like yes. an overhear, but we should really know what we're what we're <laughs> supporting before we, you know, ask for a vote on supporting it. Um, does anyone have anything else they'd like to add to the manager goals or to the report? Um, I'll I'll circulate. I'll work. Stephanie, let's you and me try to meet maybe even this in the next two days, if possible, to go over some of this stuff again, try to what we didn't do on Monday that when the machine crashed and then fix up number six and just try to get something circulating so that we can finalize it next time. I feel like we're running a little late here. We are running a little late. So. Sure, we can meet on um, Friday and we can um, we can formalize that offline. Okay, yeah, let's for a time. Time. I do have time this week, I think, and things are going to get a little busier next week, so. Um, all right, so if there's, I know this is a lot to go through quickly, so like I say, I think it's better if everyone looks at it and sends me their notes, and I'll ask specifically for input on, especially on the um, uh, town manager goals. All right, should we move on? Okay, stop sharing. What's next? Um, waste recycling related topics. These are the things that we don't know about yet. Uh, there was this recycling ban request, which I didn't have time to look into. Did you, Stephanie? This was the, yeah. No, I did not specifically but, look into that at all. So let's try to leave that on for next time because I, I do want to, there was a request, uh, I think it was two meetings ago now, uh, by someone who made a comment that, oh, I don't even remember without looking back at the notes what the comment was. It was that the recycling, oh, that dark plastics for some reason were not being recycled because the machine readers couldn't read the numbers on them or something like that. And I hadn't heard that before and I wanted to, we wanted to check on it, um, check with someone who would know. Um, what's going on with recycling at the, this is regarding the, um, what's it called? The, the place where you drop trash. Transfer station. Transfer, that's what I was looking for, the transfer station. Um, all right, so now. You know, can I just, uh, and I know you wanna look into this on, on the waste hauler stuff, but I, 
I remember getting an email from Darcy and apparently at their meeting on September 9th, the town council voted unanimously to advise the manager to issue an RFP to local haulers. Yeah. Um, and the vote had a number of bullet points, negotiating contract with a waste hauler um, on behalf of the residents for unlimited recyclables and compostables. It would include a robust pay fee structure, curbside composting would be made available to all yeah. residents. Really it, I mean, it's a whole thing that was at the town council. So when you look it up, Lori, it was there and they voted on it earlier this oh. month. Good, good, good. And that's what we're looking for. You know, if we have, well, I'll look it up next time and I'll, we'll bring something next time. I think we reported out that that was voted on. And I think okay. I mentioned that there was an RFP that RFP. was going out at yeah. the last meeting. So, uh, um, you know, maybe we want to get more information past that point. Right, just to support that effort. Um, I have a vague recollection of talking about this a long time ago and maybe supporting something. Does anyone else remember that? Maybe I, writing to support. Hmm? Are you saying, that, I think, you know, um, in previous iterations of this annual report, is that? No, no, I mean, I, mean, I mean, like two years ago or something like that, uh, that ECAC, a... Oh, there was a letter of support. Yes. I mean, it was definitely a letter of support for uh, zero, it was zero waste. Okay. Specifically the zero waste initiative. Okay. All right. So we had talked about some piece of this, but not the specific RFP. So it's not clear if the RFP has already been issued. It hasn't been. I think they what it they hasn't. voted was to authorize the town manager to issue an RFP. I don't ah. think it's been done yet. Okay, I'm going to make a note here. Those two. Okay. And town manager goal. Okay, good. I, uh, all right, good. So there is something there for us to support to just encourage him to go ahead and please do this. Um, but let's find out what's in it first and have a little short discussion about that. Um, okay, education and outreach. Um, should, we, should we move on? Any other? Okay, if, that, if we move on then, pay, uh, Don, anything on pace? Nope. I have nothing new, no. Yep, nothing new. Um, Stephanie, anything new on pace? Nope. Yeah. yeah. Uh, coordination with local groups, Tony? Nothing Not new? Much. Okay. Nope. I will say there is a, an energy symposium in October, but the newsletter for that hasn't come out yet. But as soon as it comes out, I'll let you guys know. Um, I think it'll be fascinating so, and worth checking out. Yep, absolutely. That'll be cool. I've been sending some of the ETI stuff onto my, some of the announcements I get through ETI onto my students in my first year seminar. So <laughs> um, I don't think I have anything more for heat pumps, Stephanie, that's all in the works. Do you have any updates on that? Um, no just that I had another meeting with CET. I mean, this could, I can actually cover this with um, staff updates. Okay, then let's do it with staff updates. Staff updates, Climate Resilient School. I haven't heard much else other than the next uh, role. What's it called? Role. Oh, I had it here somewhere. Role. What did they call it? Last year, we did a little bit of. Um, yeah, it's not here anywhere. Oh, come on. I had it and I was going to report on it. I got a I got a email about the next roll walk and ride to school day or something like that uh -huh. mm -hmm. coming up in first week in October or second week in October. I think October 9th is sticking in my brain. Uh, but I'm not seeing it now. I'm looking for it and now I don't see it. Yeah, I, I don't know where it is. At any rate, that's too bad. Because that's something I thought, um, you know, we could just be doing some outreach around. 
Um, I'll certainly send to my list if I can find it. Stephanie, do you have that information by any chance? I know I had it. It was in a flyer in an email. Um, I don't. I know they had a booth at the block party, um, but I didn't have the specifics about it. Hill families. Oh, here it is. No, that was last year. Walk, bike, or roll to school. It's called walk, bike, or roll to school. And it is not here. <laughs> I know I got it, and I don't know why it's not here. Oh well, I'll send a I'll send a note if I find it. I will just send an email to all of you. And remember, there's no discussion around it. It's just something for you to distribute or do what you want with. Um, just a reminder to the new members: we're not allowed to have email discussions offline outside of meetings. Um, so you know you can send out information, but there shouldn't be any back and forth. Lori, just real quick, I'm just looking up walk bike roll and it's um i think it's officially october 9th yeah that was what so it's like a me. i don't know if it's like a national effort <clears throat> yeah um, yeah it's a national effort so i think oh. that is the date october 9th okay so october 9th everybody walk bike or roll to work <laughs> or just uh you know let folks know if you have kids um, all right. Um, for climate resilience. So on to the advisory and support stuff. Um, Steve, anything more on that? There was some information we were looking for last time on the building efficiency, not bylaw now, but uh, surveys done during inspections sort of evolved. Um, that was a couple of meetings ago. We were yeah, there were some ideas of perhaps trying to get information off of Zillow or something. The only progress I've made is I did um, sign up for this peer-to-peer -peer energy equity group sponsored by ACEE -E and MEEP, which I can't remember what those stand for. Um, Stephanie, you were going to also be participating in this, I believe. Did you hear back from them, Steve? I think I filled out, I better double check. I think I, I did volunteer and I think I filled out a profile, uh, online, a survey, but have not heard anything back since then. Okay. I did the same. So I yeah. haven't heard. So I just wondered. So okay. yeah, I guess that's, we'll continue to, uh, investigate that possibility. I might sign up. It was something I was also sort of interested in. So maybe I'll go back and sign up for that. It just slipped my mind completely. Um, and it also, I remember, sounded like they, um, well, anyway, I'll, I'll go back and look at it. Um, cool. So that'll be, that'll be interesting to hear about. Uh, okay. So draft solar bylaw. Now that we have a lot to talk about. And I think there was a draft in our packet uh, Steve. Yeah, well, um, I'll, I'll give, I guess, my sense, and then Stephanie can add. the For new members, I don't know, are you guys familiar with the draft solar bylaw that's been developed over the last year or two or three? Okay. Um, <laughs> stepping back a bit, <clears throat> a couple of years ago, there was interest amongst um, citizens in the town to create actually a um, a pause or a temporary pro prohibition on new solar developments that went to the town council. They did not approve that, but they did approve the development of a um, more extent extensive solar bylaw. Um, and that they created the solar bylaw working group. And one of our members was the chair of that group, Dwayne Brager. That group met for about two years, I think, and developed a draft solar bylaw. They um, finalized their work in November of 2023, so this past November, and forwarded it up to the town council. Town council said, great, thank you. And as usual, they gave it to a subcommittee of the council called the Community Resource Committee, or CRC. CRC has been working with it um, largely with the goal of taking what Solar Bylaw Working Group, which, which is a citizens group, 
It was made up of um, citizens from around town, plus a couple of staff, including Stephanie. CRC is taking that and putting it more into the format and language that's typical for a zoning bylaw. Uh, that largely they're trying to organize it and remove redundancies. They are also tweaking it here and there um, to, uh, and perhaps even changing some of the restrictions or requirements that the Solar Bylaw Working Group developed. That draft was what Stephanie distributed yesterday. That's a draft that CRC has been working with and the comments in that draft were um, collected by Stephanie and Christine Brestrup who and uh, who are uh, from town staff providing feedback. The CRC met last night. They spent a lot of time talking about some other things uh, related to this. Um, how, how to deal with public comment during their meetings was one kind of longish discussion. Um, but they did finally get into the first couple paragraphs, spent about an hour or two on those, particularly the nexus statements that are there. Um, so they are beginning to go through and take suggestions and use their own knowledge to um, sort of amongst themselves approve or revise the bylaw. And at some point, they will be finished with that process and presumably send it back to town council for full town council review and vote. At some point, um, ECAC, I think ECAC should weigh in on it and probably sooner while C do this while CRC is still working on it and provide our suggestions or endorsements of, of elements of it or suggestions for changes while the CRC is still working on it, while the draft is still sort of malleable. Um, I, I suspect when it goes up to the town council for consideration, it's, it'll probably be somewhat less likely to entertain major changes. Um, although I'm not sure, maybe Stephanie can reflect on that. So I think our goal for the near future will be to study and that draft and then come up with our endorsements of what's in there or recommendations for different aspects of that and pass that on to CRC. I'll, I'll, I'll stop there and um, Stephanie, or I guess Don's got his hand up. People can ask questions and make comments. Don, go ahead. Yeah, I just have a quick question, Steve. Is CRC, since so much of this bylaw is tied up with legal requirements um, that exist as a result of a statute passed by the um, legislature a number of years ago, and which has obviously led to a piece of litigation when Shutesbury um, tried to uh, uh, adopt a bylaw. Uh, uh, in putting this wording together, while it's still malleable, are they dealing with counsel at all in terms of what may or may not pass muster. I mean, I understand that's the point of some of these nexus statements to kind of pull in stuff which is enough language to deal with the statutory issues um, that the land court's been dealing with. So I'll shut up now and just ask you whether that's the case. Yes, um, Solar Bylaw Working Group did send drafts to town council to the, to the law firm that town council uses and the representatives, the lawyers did come to, I think at least two meetings. And, and Stephanie, do you wanna give the summary of this to, to answer Don's question? Sure, sure. So Jonathan Murray from KP Law came, he reviewed the draft that was originally being developed um, and then he commented on it um, again with those particular lawsuits in mind. Um, and referenced those. Um, he, I think, I don't know if it will be Jonathan Murray specifically, but at some point when there's a final draft, it will definitely get reviewed by town council before it gets adopted. The What Don was referring to, if others aren't familiar, is that there's a, a state law that says that communities cannot regulate solar developments, ground-mounted solar developments, um, except for purposes of community health, safety, and welfare. 
And it's a similar provision that towns cannot restrict development of schools or churches or a few other things that um, history and historically have sort of been a problem where sometimes towns have not wanted those things in their neighborhoods. Um, so solar is one of those. And so, yes, the, the town can regulate as long as they justify that they are regulating it for the benefit of public health, safety, and welfare. Um, and yes, I would say both uh, Solar Bylaw Working Group and the members of the CRC, which are town councilors, are sort of well aware of that and the legal, the lawsuits that have gone back and forth. And there's, there's several prominent ones that have sort of helped define what constitutes community health so safety and welfare. Yeah, go ahead, Stephanie. I, and I was just going to say that, so that was um, an incredibly wonderful summary, Steve, <laughs> of their process. Um, I do want to just make one correction, which is the draft that you all currently have does not include staff comments. I mean, the oh. staff comments, it's only my name appears because I was actually typing the comments, but those were comments made by CRC members. So staff review is happening, um, and those comments are going to be collected and that will come up at the next meeting on October 8th, I believe is the next meeting. Um, so, but, but you're not reviewing a, a, um, a draft that incorporates those. Yeah, so I, sorry. I was just gonna ask Lori, what, how do we want to proceed as ECAC? Um, I guess yeah. my suggestion would be between now and the next meeting, if members here could get familiar with the draft as it stands now, um, the next meeting, we can, one, make updates if CRC has made any additional changes, and two, begin to have discussions about what elements of that bylaw we think are appropriate and help advance the town's climate action goals, and what elements of it might we want to make suggestions for changes. And it's, you know, it's a fairly extensive, complicated, bylaw if you yeah. haven't studied zoning bylaws yeah. it, it, it can be quite a quite a big thing to digest yeah and it's long too it's it's quite yeah. long um so it, it is a lot to digest so so in that regard um uh tony let me just uh, respond to steve real quick and ask a question and I, I see you with your hand um i'd sort of like to ask you steve to point us at sections that you've been you've been watching a lot of this so I'd sort of like to ask you to point us to sections that you think might particularly need ECAC input. Um, you know, maybe just give us a page number or a paragraph starting with something like that. Um, the thing that I'm a little concerned about, I think I think we were all pretty happy with, well, you know, from what we heard, Dwayne, look, Dwayne Brezier was running the original bylaw working group. Um, and I think, that and you were attending meetings as well, Steve, if I remember right. Um, and I think that made us all feel pretty comfortable that um, it was a good process, <laughs> right? And now it's sort of gone into this in-between place where public comment's still being taken. And uh, I worry a little that the original intent of the whole thing will get a little bit mangled in the process. So if you, if there are particular places that you're aware of that there are um, you know, outside pressures to change that weren't there during the working group, um, it might be a particularly good place for ECAC to say something. Um, so uh, so there's, there's that. Um, and other than that, I just wanna encourage anyone, I, I typically, I think the CRC meets on Tuesdays, right? And I have been busy on Tuesdays this year writing letters for the November election. <laughs> hosting them at my house. So I don't usually, I can't usually make those CRC meetings, but I encourage anyone else on ECAC who's interested in this to, you know, go to those CRC meetings and listen to what's going on with the solar bylaw, at least attending the part of it where the solar bylaw is discussed. Um, and be ready to, as a member of the public, to make comments as well. Um, all right, so I'll leave that. Is there any part of it right now that you'd like to bring to our attention, Steve? Oh, and, and Stephanie, go ahead. Sorry. Tony, did you have a question or did you? My question is the same as yours. I was okay. interested if you could point out places that you wanted to look at. Right. And Stephanie? 
Um, yeah, I just wanted to point out that the the final draft that went to CRC was referred to them for refinement, right. meaning that as written, um, that was not an implementable bylaw because there was a lot of regulatory language. There were some conditions. There were things that really, you know, you couldn't just take that bylaw as written and hand it to a developer and have them be able to develop. There were sections that were really pretty problematic. Some of those have already been adjusted, um, but I think now it's at the point where it's really being fine-tuned by the committee. And I think, again, to Steve's point, if those are the this is the point at which you want to weigh in. But um, I just want to make it clear that it wasn't that the draft that came to them was right. in any way a final product. Right. Yeah, I think it, it had a lot of good ideas and ideas that were deeply researched and discussed by the Solar Bylaw Working Group. But as a group of citizens, they weren't used to writing zoning bylaws. And so the, it was not really in a zoning bylaw format. And so CRC is largely trying to put it more into a zoning um, bylaw format um, and hopefully not changing the intent of what Solar Bylaw Working Group did. But that's one thing I'm going to be watching for because that there has been some suggestions from members of CRC to insert new requirements or change some of the requirements that um, I, were discussed and debated and, and ultimately voted on by Solar Bylaw Working Group. Right. And I will, can I just, I know Tony just had his hand up, but just really quickly, I wanted to say one thing is that when the process started, what was um, recommended was because there was a little bit of consternation around their language in the draft. And we pulled out what we saw as regulations and pulled out what we saw as conditions and then created companion documents. Those haven't been looked at in some time and they won't be because they're focusing on the bylaw. But the idea was that we wouldn't lose the language that the the working group developed so that it was still there maybe in the regulatory companion document. But yeah. Um, I just wanted to note that, you know, some of their work is, it doesn't show up necessarily in the bylaw right now, but there is the regulatory document language and there is the conditions document that hopefully would be um, put together as part of the package that then gets delivered to the council. I, I don't, that hasn't been discussed in a while, but that was certainly an intent at the beginning, <clears throat> excuse me, of the process. Right. And Tony, again, did you have something? Yes, two things. I was wondering if I could get like a brief summary of the intentions of the CRC with the solar bylaw, um, so that when I'm looking through it, I kind of know what to keep in mind in terms of the continuity. I know I'm sorry, I'm surrounded by a bunch of noise. And then the second thing um, is, is there does the CRC have a, a set deadline um, or an intended deadline for this that we should keep in mind um, in terms of like placing the importance on this reading of the solar bylaw. I, I think, can just yeah, there's go no ahead, Stephanie. There's no deadline right now. So there's no oh. deadline for development of the final product. Um, and I would direct you, I think the solar bylaw working group page still exists on the town website. And so their charge is there. That would be a really good place to go. I think. And and if you have any um, follow-up questions, please feel free to reach out to me directly. Okay. And Steve? I, th I, th I think that's good. I'll, um, I will try before our next meeting to, <laughs> what do I want to do? Uh, I, if I can, maybe I'll try to make a summary of it and then suggest sections that we might want to focus on. Yeah, or even just suggesting sections would be useful if that's if that's easier. Yeah. Just with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, is there anything in particular you want us to look at right away that you know is going to be on that list? Um. No. Um, my concern, I guess, with the bylaw is that as zoning bylaws, they are restrictive in nature. They they tell landowners what they can can't do with their land. Right. The zoning bylaws don't really say what you can do. They just say what they can't do. And I think there's been a missed opportunity somewhat in retrospect that 
what would be ideal would be some kind of a policy that restricts solar development on the most eco. We're talking ground mount, large ground mount solar developments. This bylaw does not uh, affect rooftop or parking lot type developments. It's only greater than one acre larger development. Um, ideally, a policy would be to restrict those developments on forest and farmland uh, away from the most ecologically important lands, but somehow encourage them on lands that are most suitable. And so what's missing in this bylaw is any sort of encouragement of solar development in the more appropriate places. Right. And there are some concepts for providing that kind of encouragement um, based on, there are maps of all kinds of uh, sort of ecological aspects of the landscape, whether it's uh, bio map, um, wildlife, whether it's soil carbon potential and other things. So there could be a map that sort of rates land for suitability for solar, and then that could be used as a basis for saying, well, it gets a little bit tricky, but yeah, it's sort of a way of encouraging it here, but not there, depending on your values. It gets tough because you can't, I mean, you, you, you can't get down to the parcel level in these bylaws and you can't, um, so it gets challenging in there. Uh, but um, yeah, I guess Stephanie. Stephanie yeah. I will say that there is the map that was developed by GZA. So yeah. we do have a map that does just that, just what you said, Steve. It does identify the more sensitive locations and it does identify um, places that are feasible. So it doesn't say for sure that you can develop, but right. it's the most, you know, given a whole set of conditions, those parcels are ident that are identified feasible are the ones that are most likely to be able to be developed. That was the first part of this whole process. Yeah. Um, Andrew? Oh, I was just um, wanted to clarify something for myself is like this encouragement. It's 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 a way to provide. It needs to provide some value to prospective companies who would want to go in and something of value is uh, just as Stephanie said, we already have is this is the this is most likely to be, you know, accepted by the town and thus it reduces the cost of, you know, or the risk of projects. But that's, it sounds like we already have something like that. Um, does the town bylaw, do we want it to pre to guarantee that that map exists or is that something it can do or that? I, I don't think that the bylaw mm -hmm. will reference that map specifically because mm -hmm. we didn't want to say, you know, it's not an absolute, it's more of a right. tool that will allow developers to maybe have a quick first look and say, oh, this is a potential site and, and go from there. Right. I, I, I just was wondering, do we want the, the bylaw to say like every X years we will produce a most an up to date map? Like, can we enforce that, like enforce the value creation somehow? I don't think that we wanted to do that because you're also mm -hmm. looking at private parcels. Mm -hmm. So we wouldn't be encouraging development on private parcels. We're just saying, because homeowners businesses could also look at and use this as a tool. So really it's a tool. It's not meant to be a regulatory tool specifically. Okay. All right. Uh, Don has a question. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Put our hand up. Yeah, Thank probably you. real quick. I, I would think that some of the stuff you're talking about, Steve, whether it's on a map or not on a map would would be encompassed in kind of the definition section of the bylaw yeah you know what is a suitable this or a whatever language you were using and that definition may reference a map but it but it's 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 definition language which is really really important when we're all taking a look at bylaws don't skip over the definition section yeah yeah, there are definitions and they are, they do reference maps. So they reference in some cases um, soil maps from Massachusetts to identify some of the prime agricultural soil. Mm -hmm. uh, they map, they, they reference some of the mapping that's been done by the Natural Heritage Program in Massachusetts that identifies um, uh, the, some of the best wildlife um, zones 
And when the way that bylaw is written now, if there's a proposed development on some of those lands, there may be extra requirements asked of the developer, uh, maybe an additional soil survey or soil assessment or documentation on how they will preserve the soil so that when the solar field is removed in the future, the soils can be returned to agricultural use. So right now there are maps that do represent attributes of the landscape, um, but only sort of to add on additional requirements in some of those areas, uh, in some of those more sensitive areas. And what, what's not there is sort of a promise of a perhaps a speedier review or a uh, indication that the permit granting authority would would be look favorably upon developments that are outside of those most ecologically important uh, areas mapped on those maps. All right, so yeah, so this is a really complicated story and for the new members of the um, community, uh, Andrew and Caitlin, um, Dwayne Brezier, who was the was on ECAC and was also chair of the Solar Bylaw Working Group, also worked with, he was also uh, the director of, I think the director of the Clean Energy Extension at UMass. He retired this year. Um, but as in that role, he put together a series of workshops and panel discussions on solar um, that are still available in recordings. And they are fantastic. I mean, there are so many issues here and his the workshops he put together delve into all of them. So if it's something you're interested in, um, I can find that link and, and send it. Um, or you can just Google it. Uh, what, what they were called the solar solar workshops. UMass Dwayne's name. Western, Western Massachusetts Solar Forum. That's it. So, something That's like it. that. Um, I I believe the website is up and um, recordings. There were four yeah. or five of these um, are all still available online. So if you have a, a weekend, you can spend watching them all. <laughs> all right. Um, moving onward, um, I think, transporta any transportation update updates, Tony? And regional and state policy, I don't have anything there either. Um, so on to item seven, which is the summary of the meeting with the Massachusetts Climate Chief, Chief Melissa Hoffer. That was Stephanie. Okay. Um, so I took notes, but I will say, first of all, that um, this ended up really not being specifically a meeting with Climate Chief Melissa Hoffer, even though she was in attendance. So what happened was there were a group of um, people from some other communities, Longmeadow and a few others, and there were some industry professionals and I was invited along and then some other consultants were available. Um, and they had put together a bunch of questions. A lot of the questions actually focused on um, grid infrastructure, difficulty transitioning to um, decarbonization, specifically moving towards electrification and wanting the chief support for that, support for the transition for um, residential homeowners. Um, so the people that were there actually, in addition to the climate chief, were um, Kristen Aleko, who is the um, Western Mass representative for the governor's office, um, Elizabeth Mahoney, who is the commissioner for the Mass DOER, uh, Joanne Bottomer, um, Aurora Eddington, and Austin Dawson, also from the Mass DOER. So we had a pretty good amount of time to have a conversation with them. A lot of the focus um, was on the updates to the Mass Save program, and I think I may have reported out on this recently that they're creating a new three-year plan. And at this point, I think the plan is going to be released sometime in February. Um, but they were talking about the draft plan and how it was going to be focused on um, heat pumps and updating customers, uh, updating, I'm sorry, the customer model so that there's kind of a faster transition to heat pumps and heat pump technology. Um, they talked about, um, let's see, a lot of focus on the mass save changes. Uh, um, and there were links that were shared. And I think what I'm going to do, rather than my notes are kind of 
all over the place, but I think I'll share with you the links that they provided um, and that were someone had put together and summarized at the end of the meeting. And there's just a lot of information there Those with those links and they'll take you to more information about programming and what's being updated. So I'll just share that with you. Um, but I think in general, it was just, you know, trying to sort of say that there'll be more support for what we're all looking for and struggling with. You know, the fact that there's capacity issues with the grid in terms of more solar development, um, you know, um, there was, you know, the request to do something about the caps on solar development, um, those types of things. So those kinds of questions were basically um, posed to them and, you know, they responded in terms of what they're kind of working on and trying to sort of leave us with some hope, I believe. So I will share those links and you all can take a look. Um, Honestly, I haven't even had a chance myself to start going through them, but it was a lot of information. It was actually kind of overwhelming and there was no summary, um, no summary document sort of provided at the end. And there were so many people talking. Um, so I did my best to take notes, but my notes are kind of all over the place. So I don't know that they're a great summary, but those links will be helpful. So yeah, I'm I'm really interested in seeing those and um, you know understanding that this was probably more focused on the big infrastructural and structural changes. The first question that pops into my head <laughs> is what what's going to happen to the rebates for heat pumps? <laughs> is it going to stay the same, go up or go away in the process of doing this? Yeah, that was that. I mean, I know that came up. Um, I don't think they were going to go away. I don't right. think that was the intent. I think the intent is that for and I'm hearing this from several sources, so I think this is going to be true, is that there will be some kind of um, threshold, uh, economic threshold for those that are lower income, where the heat pump transition will be completely free. I think that's already the case. I don't know that it's entirely the case. I mean, they made it sound like this was something that was a new development and that there would be absolutely 100% coverage. I don't think there's 100% coverage. So, um, so I think that's coming. Um, and then I think there's going to be like a, a scale of, you know, um, funding allocation for depending on income, sort of where you are. And I think that's kind of true now too. And I think that's just going to continue. Um, but again, I think there'll, there'll probably be more information in the links that I can share. That's good. Thanks. I'm sorry. I'm, my dog was jumping around to get out of this room. No <laughs> Let him out and explode. And now my camera is failing. Stay there. All right. I give up. <laughs> uh, okay. So thank you, Stephanie. Um, any other questions on that? I'm trying to fix this. No, I don't have a question, but I just, um, I need to head out to another event um, and, and drop off. Um, but yeah, I, I'm going to look forward to reviewing that link, Stephanie, as well as the solar bylaw that was sent yesterday. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I, just in general, I think every Wednesday, I guess for the rest of this year, I'll have to jump off around 645. That's a heads up to everyone. <laughs> All right. Um, I might be, we can, we can talk about starting about a half hour early. I could, no, half hour is not going to do it. We're starting at 5.30 now? 30. Oh, five o'clock. I could, I could make it back by five o'clock if I need to. So if that's okay. helpful. Uh, helpful for me personally, but, um, <laughs> right. but yeah, that can be a discussion as a group. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Sounds thanks. good. Yeah. Thanks everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, and Steve, did I see your hand up? No, somebody else had a question. Oh, there we go, Andrew. I actually, just while we're on the topic, I do have a heart out just today at, at around seven, um, but the rest of my Wednesday should be clear, so. Okay, so let's try to finish up. And any other questions on this? In that case, uh, we don't have too many more things on here. We have staff updates. There are probably some interesting staff updates. Go ahead, Stephanie. I can very quickly summarize those. Sure. Um, so 
we have our three community Valley Green Energy Information Session in happening tomorrow by Zoom. That's at 7 p.m. That'll go from 7 to 8. And our consultants who were kind enough to come to your last meeting from Mass Power Choice will be there, Marlena Patton and uh, Paul Gromer. Um, they're great. And I know if people ask questions, they're so uh, wonderful at really being able to clearly articulate responses to some very complicated issues. Um, so I encourage folks to to sit in on that if you can. We will record it, so um, so it should be available um, after after the fact too. If you don't get a chance to to participate tomorrow, um, I think. Oh, also, I will be um, having a radio interview with Ben Weil um, from Northampton, who's my counterpart, who. Uh, We'll also be promoting, we'll also both be promoting Valley Green Energy on WHMP on Friday. Um, I think we're going to be on at 10 or it's being recorded at 10. I don't know when it'll be on. So um, we did also do a session with New England Public Media with um, Monty for the fabulous 413, Monty and Calise. That was really fun. Um, uh, then let's see, we also have... Um, I've had uh, meetings with CET now. I've had two meetings regarding the heat pump program. They are developing an outreach plan and they are going to um, unveil that to me at our next meeting next week. I have asked them um, if they would appear at one of your upcoming meetings to discuss the outreach plan and the ways in which they might want to partner with you all to help promote the heat pump program. So definitely part of the uh, um, education and outreach. So maybe think about ways um, that you might, ideas that you might have of how you can engage with that. That would be great. Um, and then just Valley, Be Valley Bike is um, continuing. It's going to actually maintain um, a presence through the winter. They're going to keep the system going, certainly on bad weather days. They won't be running the bikes. They can shut them down. Um, but it is going to have a presence. We've done this once before, and it was pretty successful. And uh, we will do that again this year. And I keep talking about the station in front of Town Hall, hoping that we will make that the first priority for the installation in the spring. Spring is sort of the official launch of the program. But seeing that we're not shutting down this year, it's just going to all, you know, sort of go right into the the spring launch. Um, so hopefully we will get a station back up and running um, in the springtime. And that will likely be the drop mobility system. So I'm not sure how that's gonna all work out, but we'll have to figure that out. Um, and I'm trying to think if there's any other program updates. I think those are the big things right now. That's pretty exciting. <laughs> there's a lot going on and a lot for us to do. Um, so Caitlin and Andrew, if you are not, are you both aware of the CCA and what's going on there? Okay, so- Not as much. Yeah, I would suggest you just have a look. Our last meeting recording, is that up yet, Stephanie? Oh yeah, that's, yeah. If you go to the, um, so if you go to the Town of Amherst Mass YouTube site, videos of all of the all of the video recordings of all the committee meetings are located there and you can find the last ECAC meeting which was September 11th easiest to look by date yeah. um, but the, the there's a one hour time. presentation yeah it starts at 6 uh 6 30 yeah. is the presentation from um, mass power choice and it'll, it'll fill you in on what that is it's actually pretty exciting we have a it's, it's not a it's different from a municipal light it's a it's just a aggregation to buy electricity in bulk and resell it gr greener, slightly cheaper electricity um, to residents. Uh, so it's, it's worth looking at that so you know about that. And similarly with uh, well, the heat pump program, we can, um, I, how do you, I, I can, maybe next time we'll give a little overview of it or something like that. Well, uh, we don't have, it's still being developed. So that's part of what they're going to be working on that yeah. I'm working maybe on. We'll come and talk CET. about it so you, you get caught up then. Yeah. Especially if you have to talk about it. All right, cool. So that brings us to, if, if there are any questions on any of that before we go on. Because then that brings us to ECAC member updates. Any updates from anyone? I don't have anything else either. Items for the next agenda, I think we are packed between the annual, finishing up the annual report and looking seriously at the, um, I think Tony, you were asking before about deadline for the, for the bylaw. 
It may not be a deadline, but I think this is our window. <laughs> I think this is a, a key window for us so uh, of opportunity. So I think we probably need to spend quite some time on that next time. Um, the usual and, and also the waste related stuff. So the we I will have to I will try to deal with that to figure some of that out um, and either invite Darcy uh, or or come up with a um, you know we, we've done this before so I'm not sure if it's necessary to invite her but if I can't find a good write up of what's involved um, then maybe that's what we'll do so uh, we'll, that that'll be on the Item four, it will be on the agenda again next time. All right. Time for public comment, but I don't think we have any public. I don't see any. Nope. So with that, do we have a, shall we adjourn? Someone make a motion. Yes. <laughs> right. I motion to adjourn. Second it, anyone? I'll second it. All right. In that case, I'll see you all in two weeks. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome again, Andrew and Caitlin. Yep. Thank you. Thanks. Welcome. Bye.